We awoke on day 11 in the Monks Valley in Cappadocia and headed straight out to find a hot air balloon. If you've never been in a hot air balloon before, you have to try it. It really is quite an experience. Morning. After the balloon, we got our stuff ready and headed on to Trabzon, 700 kilometers away. With no properly functioning maps, there was a lot of getting lost and a lot of stopping on the side of the road. Eventually though, we did manage to make it to Trabzon We found some cheap, unused student accommodation and used this as a base of operations to find parts for our cars. Trabzon, being a major port, had every car part imaginable, which is why we were stopping through. It was also absolutely flooded with garages, so you could keep bargaining for the best deal wherever you could find one. We're in Trabzon in Turkey, trying to get a roof rack put on our car. We've been speaking to the guys for maybe half an hour now, and there's been quite a little communication. They now said they're going to drive somewhere and we have to follow them. Um, we, we think we're going to have to drill into the roof of the car to get a rack on and that should be okay. Eventually, it all came down to Joe's drawing ability. The other teams that we were with managed to get the sump guards and roof racks they needed. Unfortunately, we couldn't find a garage who could do what we needed and had to head on roof rackless. Whilst the border to Georgia was only 200 kilometers away, we had to head out early, as the border could take up to five hours just to get through. We're in Turkey, and we want to be in Georgia, so we have to cross the border. The time now, at the end of the clock will be 8.27. Um, uh, the border shuts at 11, and we don't know if that's Turkey time or Georgian time. And there's a thunderstorm rolling in. And time Turkey time? Turkey, <laughs> Turkey time. Turkey time. Sponsored by Accurist. <laughs> is 8.27. And Georgia's time. And Georgia time is 9.27. And then the border shuts at 11, and we want to try and get through to go to Batumi, which is this awesome little beach base where uh, we could wake up on my birthday feeling refreshed and wonderful. The alternative is, as we've heard, the border can take five hours. Uh, we wake up next to no man's land for Adam's birthday. Yeah, party it down with... Pretty George similar situation. Um, either way, we'll see how it goes. I'm quite excited for this thunderstorm because we haven't seen rain in a really, really long time and being British, Ooh. we kind of miss it. The trick to border crossings on the rally is to not go completely insane. This means you have to find any and all forms of entertainment that you can, although this can be quite hard when you're in a 10 mile traffic jam that barely moves. Hey doggy. What should we name him? Oh, it's you. So I smell awful. What should we name him? I think we should name him... Uh... Turkey Georgia Crossing Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Roll straight off the tongue. <laughs> oh, you so happy. Hold on, T G C D. G T. G T. Gin tonic. Or just G T. <laughs> Grand Turismo. Come on, Tankeray. Grand Turismo. So we're at the Turkey Georgia border and we've adopted a dog. Say hi, Tankeray. He's a good boy. Good boy, Tankeray. And we've got him some food. Tasty snacks. Snacks for the doggy. Tankeray, you want some, some bassy? Ooh. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, look at him, he's a good boy.
after an emotional goodbye with Tanqueray, we made our way back to the convoy to find other ways to keep ourselves entertained. Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Alex, and we are the, the Turkey, Turkey Georgia Border Show. Show. Nailed it! Yes! Fucking nailed it. Today on the show, will we, we get through the border before 11? And does it close at 11? <laughs> I don't think so. What do you think? Despite Alex's pessimism, five hours later, we finally made it into Georgia. So we're now in Georgia. Tash and Yay! Alex. Adam's with the car, and at this point, we're not actually certain if he's getting through for many reasons, which I'll talk about when we're not at a, at the border. Happy birthday! Thank you. Yeah, because we're now in Georgia. It's my birthday. It's been my birthday for 20 minutes. Yes, and you also have kind of missed when it's your birthday in it's, a sad way. <laughs> We set off for Batumi, a beach resort where a local bartender was letting rallyers sleep on the beach in front of his bar for free. It's like Vegas, but like in like a third world fucking country. Oh <laughs> Shit better be cheap. We woke on Adam's birthday to a stranger shouting at us with a megaphone. Once we got over the shop, we spent the next couple of days chilling in Batumi and preparing for the mountainous trip to the capital, Tbilisi. We bought feet and seats, so now we won't be sweaty. Once we got to Tbilisi, we grabbed some beers and called it a night. We had a long drive the next day and had to wake up early to get to the Azeri border. M2A60 and then either that one or that one, I guess. We got lost almost instantly, but luckily some local policemen were kind enough to give us a free police escort out of the city. We finally reached the border. Everyone was in high spirits. And it's at exactly this point that it all started going wrong. So having just got turned away from Azerbaijan for screwing up by e visas, Adam and I Escapes. got within a centimetre of being stuck in no man's land for 24 hours because they couldn't understand why we went the wrong way. And why we didn't have an Azerbaijani stuff. Why, why we weren't from Azerbaijan. And they were like, why would you come a day early? Like, and we were like, because we're complete idiots, more. Yeah. Alex was with the car and hadn't fared much better either. And the language barrier just wasn't helping. And then he was asking these questions like, what's in the bags? Uh, who am I with? Are you boys? Shit, like you've got so much stuff for one person. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, are you sure it's just clothes in the bags? And I was thinking of the fireworks and I was like, yes, just clothes. <laughs> Sleeping bags. You can oh, technically man. wear fireworks. <laughs> well, we're here at the Azerbaijan border. I went in with the car. You guys went in on foot. And it turns out that our visas don't start till tomorrow. So I looked like a massive idiot in front of all the police. <laughs> I had to turn my car around. Loads of angry men had to move their trucks. And yeah, so we're gonna have to find something to do until 12 o'clock. 20 hours on the border. <laughs> <laughs> we're racing the taxi. <laughs> We're pushing a hundred and he's just having a great time. No talking to strangers, Adam. <laughs> I just <laughs> we drove past him. He was like, ah, it's a blizzard. And I was like, yes, that's a place. And then he started <laughs> drag racing me. <laughs> we spent the day walking around Tbilisi, taking in the tourist attractions. Eventually, we went up to the highest point in the city to do a bit of an update try and gain our bearings. Mm. 
We're in a facility in Georgia right now, and uh, we've had quite a hectic day. Do you want to start off, Adam? All right. We drove to the border with a pizza escort. We got rejected from the border. We drove back. We were chased by a mad cab. We nearly died because someone nearly ploughed into the side of us at a roundabout. Um, Adam accidentally got us into two different drag races today. I accidentally crashed a wedding. Yeah. God, it's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a day. We've had five hours sleep and we've got to leave for the border at 11 o'clock to get there for midnight to meet up with another convoy. Which we lost today lost because today. of our bad visas. That's already in Baku. And we now have to cross 600 odd kilometres of the most corrupt police force in the world, allegedly. But we've had some awful stories. In the night, and then find an embassy where we've got GPS coordinates, but we don't really know where it is. To get a visa in time to get a ticket from a random guy from Ishmael whose number we found on Facebook. Do for a ferry? Which isn't a ferry, it's an oil tanker. That we don't know when it's going to leave. Alex, what are your thoughts Full on the Yeah, <laughs> that is a very, very brief summary of the situation. You guys are in such a flow, I didn't want <laughs> to interrupt it. It's been a mad day now I think about it. Has. It has, like, I, yeah, it's been mad. I've been sleeping for most of it. <laughs> this is all a blur. <laughs> yeah, we've named the car. Um, Maggie or Margaret? Is it Margaret Thatcher or just Margaret? Wait, Maggie T. Her full name is Margaret Thatcher. Shortened to Maggie T. Which Shortened to also Maggie stands for Micro Temper. Yeah. Yeah. And she's also the Iron Lady. She's run like a beauty. And then um, made of iron. The mysterious coolant leak has now solved itself. Uh, we got yep. rear ended at the Turkey Georgia border crossing by another team. Car's fine. Yeah. Yeah, Haley drove into us. They bent our. Um, They've bent the yeah, toe. Exactly. They bent the toe. Damn you. Toe hook. Um, toe hook. Really? Yeah. Well, we've hit it enough recently. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Toe hook's gone. Yeah. Uh, some much. guards holding strong. I think that's kind of it. Uh, We're going to go meet up with an American who has bought a car off a Swedish team because they were going to go through a very dodgy mafia region of the North Caucasus. And we're helping him drive the Swedish car through the border, through to Baku, all night. All night, you guys. Rave. All night. We got some snacks. We got some drinks. We got some drinks. But not alcoholic. We're going to have a sick Lord. night. We met up with Brad, who's doing some last minute safety checks on the Swedish team's homemade car. And I mean very homemade. They custom built their own roll cage and had some sort of tinfoil roof that was held up with crushed Red Bull cans. They'd even added their own rainbow themed speedometer and dials. I cannot explain how excited I was to get in this car. Uh, we're here at the Georgia-Azerbaijan border for round two. It's about half past twelve. Half one. Half one. Half one. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been here for like two hours now. We're so near the front of the queue. Probably like 20 minutes away. Um, definitely getting in this time. So, yeah, then six hours drive to Baku. About 20 hours and one hell of a day later, we're finally in Azerbaijan. And I'd be lying if I said I was excited about it. So, wish us luck. Getting through the border at 3 a.m. was a blessing in disguise, as it meant the police couldn't tell our cars apart from the locals. This meant we had to cover as much ground in the dark as we could. Eventually, though, sunrise did come around, and within 10 minutes, we were pulled over. Due to the volatile nature of an illegal bribe, we weren't able to get any good footage. The police were also very keen to search the dashboard for any hidden cameras and nearly took Brad's thermometer thinking it might be one. Luckily, my friend Casper has done some rough sketches so I can talk you through what happened. We saw some flashing lights in the rear view and pulled over. The police came and parked right behind us. Two men got out and came up to each side window of the car. They leant in, and I am not exaggerating this, started shouting, Money, 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 money. One of them handed me a piece of paper that said $100 on it and said, must pay, must pay. Brad adopted the policy of saying, I've done nothing wrong, I'm not giving you anything, over and over until his man got bored and left. I just sat there, smiling nervously, hoping the guy would leave me alone. Eventually he got bored and both men moved forward to the micro which Alex and Adam were waiting in. Alex chose to be disinterested and pretend that the police weren't there. Adam, on the other hand, used the tactic of reading every single page of his passport one by one to the baffled policeman and spouting random phrases like, yes, we're from the BBC. 
Eventually, both police got bored again, got in their car and drove off. We successfully survived our first illegal bribe attempt. Success! The morning carried on as we'd expected, rather quietly, apart from a close encounter at a petrol station where the police came, but it was clear that we had absolutely no money, so they left. Before we knew it, we'd finally made it to Baku and headed straight for the Turkmenistan embassy. We arrived in Baku in Azerbaijan after one of the worst drives, I guess. I mean, I've had worse, but I haven't had to bribe people. One of the most fatigued build. Fatigue's a strong word. Um, it's a good word, though. Lots of fatigue and driving since midnight, basically. Draining. And we finally arrived at the Turkmenistan embassy in Baku to find some other rallies all wearing shirts and ties as you have to be formal or they don't give you a visa apparently. So we're now doing some street changing to become formal. We followed the GPS coordinates through the city and eventually made it to the port and were relieved when we saw a ton of other rally teams. After our arduous journey, we decided to check into a nice hotel. We afforded this by getting five people in a two-man room and making the most of a ridiculous exchange rate. We used the break as a chance to give Maggie a good once over. It took a lot of duct tape and a lot of zip ties. We fixed a bunch of leaks and she was all good to go. We spent every morning of the following week turning up to the docks and hoping that there would be a ferry. The system was incredibly unreliable, although it did mean we got to meet a lot of lovely locals. We turned up at the ferry port again today um, under the promise of a ferry and one turned up but it's an oil tanker so we can't get on it today um, and as we said before it's completely unreliable um, and it's supposed to be on tomorrow so all we can do is just cross our fingers and hope a natural one comes tomorrow. You may notice in this shot that we're not in Maggie the Micra. This is because whilst Adam and Alex were out food shopping and I was dozing, someone came and nicked our car. We followed the local sign language that was saying possibly towed to a police station there we followed it to an underground car park. This car park led us to another car park. This car park eventually led us to the real car park where Maggie was waiting. We had to sign some forms, pay some fees, and eventually we got her back. So we're back in Maggie right now after an eventful morning. Adam, do you want to give us a play-by-play? -play? Um, I may have been slightly stressed for which I apologise. We, we left the car to go to a supermarket. Um, and when we came back, it was just gone. There was no note, there was no nothing. And then some guy, we think my tow truck. And then we went back to the hotel, phoned the British Embassy. So we're just in the middle of quite a busy junction on facing the wrong way. <laughs> we'll try that again. Okay, so phoned the British Embassy. They were like, you need to go to police station, sort this stuff out. We went to the police station. Met a very nice chap who spoke English, told us to go to an underground car park. And then we got there with the guy there, told us to get another taxi to go to another impound. We finally found the impound. We spotted Maggie. It was all good. We paid 20 minutes, which is about 12 quid. And, and we're back and we're good. And we haven't really lost anything. And we haven't even, yeah, it's all good. Everything's fine. And we can relax now. And relax we did. Right before we moved our car into the port with the other cars. You know, for fun. So we've said goodbye to our hotel and we're sleeping in the port. Gonna get up bright and early, get a ferry tomorrow. It's quite nice to be back on the road, seeing other rallies, sitting in chairs, drinking cheap beer. It's fun.
We awoke in the port, the previous night having taken its toll on each of the rally teams. We had to then wait for the day's news on whether or not a ferry was turning up and decided to find some other ways to entertain ourselves as always. We then heard some incredible news. The world's biggest KFC was in Baku and we had to check it out. It was while we were at this KFC that we got official confirmation that a ferry that we could get on board had arrived. We rushed over to the customs office, which ended up just being a lot of sitting around and a hell of a lot of tequila slammers, courtesy of the customs staff. Um, we waited around a lot. We gave all of our documents to a police guy, then he gave them all to Ishmael, then we all stood in the room for a while. Then Ishmael took us all to some office where we all paid like 400 odd bucks to get a seat on a passenger boat, and then we waited around for a while. And then this amazing guy came and gave us a whole bunch of ice creams and drinks, and now we're walking back to the port. And the others have gone to sort out custom shit. Because the government in Turkmenistan strictly policed the internet, we all made the most of our last bit of Wi-Fi at the very edge of the port. And before we knew it, the Bukhara had arrived, ready to take us on board and take us to Turkmenistan. Naturally, we were the last to be allowed on, so I had to set up camp at the seawall and wait to get waved on. When we awoke, the ship was still in the murky, oily waters of Baku, but the engines were finally turning. There really was no going back now. We are docked in Turkmenistan, but we don't know when we're getting off the ferry. We're making announcements in a language I don't understand. <laughs> How long do you reckon we'll be waiting? The other team was here till 5 a.m. and I think it's about 11 p.m. So, who knows? We had to wait another few hours, but eventually were let off. We were left with no information and stuck in no man's land till the morning. So we decided to cook and as always, adopted a dog. Um, cooking with gas, literally. Isn't it with petrol? No, other one. Hey buddy. Adam butchered some watermelon for us for breakfast, and after that, we had to go through the absolute labyrinth of customs offices to get into Turkmenistan officially. After this, we were good to go. So we're in the port of Turkmenbashi, having just spent 12 odd hours waiting in no man's land. Gone through about, how many uh, windows did we have to go to, do you reckon? 15. About 15 different windows, and I think we've done Alex is just going off to pay the final fee. Um, and then we're off into Turkmenistan. Any thoughts? Kind of excited to get going. We all stopped for one big group photo to celebrate making it to the North Korea of Central Asia. And then we set off, as always, with no clue what we were about to get into. It's like a mixture of Disneyland and what I imagine North Peru would be like. If this is anywhere else in the world, ratings will have some feedback. In the middle of the Turkmenistan desert, our map said there'd be a big crater filled with water here. And we've been short of water for quite a while now. It's literally a pit full of mud and fire.
So I'm Max. Hey Max. I'm Alex. So I'm Max, and you go, we're doing a show. You never do this? No. Oh, you, what are we doing? What, what, what the fuck do I do though? It's I'm called freaking the, it's out. Called, <laughs> it's the Turkey Georgia border show, you know. Oh, okay. Late, latest news and events or the Turkey Georgia Okay, border. we need like a little intro music though. We need like. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Ba -ba -ba. It's the Turkey music show. With Georgia involved too. <laughs> Tankers. TKs. TKs, what are you getting? Getting some food? Yeah. Uh, someone else start. Cool. So, quick. Uh, uh, so. <laughs> you don't get, you're in the ring of Um, so basically. That's my line. Go on then. So basic. We're near about the oh, Georgian border. So, as is today. Are you going to do the update, Adam, or not? Yeah, I'm trying to. If I can get a word in edgeways. 